These are the line patterns that we've practiced so far. Remember that there are two types, simple line patterns and complex line patterns. These aren't all simple line patterns, right? These here are simple. This is a simple one. This is a simple one. This happens to be simple. And what makes it simple is that it only has maybe one or two steps to complete, but it's reoccurring. That's what makes it a pattern. Here, while some of these are more difficult to recreate and some of them are less difficult to recreate, every pattern right here happens to be a more complex line pattern. This one may be less complex and this one might be less complex, but most of these take more than one step to create. They also include variety, a variety between thick lines and thin lines. They also may include more than one type of line, like this one. These are Greek patterns. They're all inspired by ancient Greeks. By now, you've already begun work on two different vase designs. These are both amphora vases because they have thin necks, fat bodies, and handles, and also a small foot. The top of the vase is called the lip. The round opening is the mouth. This narrow part is a neck. Here is the shoulder, that's where it comes back out. It has a body and it has a foot. That's what makes a vase. These are the terms to describe the shapes of a vase. This is an amphora vase because it has a handle, because it has a narrow neck, and because it has a wide body with a narrow foot. It makes this upside down teardrop shape, which is the body, and it has this narrow neck and a wide mouth and a handle. That makes an amphora vase. Without one of these things, it's no longer an amphora vase. It's just a different type of vase, which may have a different... So you should have already started on designing your amphora vase. On the back of this, you know that you are supposed to recreate complex line patterns at least three that you would include in your Greek vase design. You were also given a handout that had different silhouettes of Greek warriors and instruments and temples because Greek amphora vases were used to tell stories. They were often left as grave markers for fallen soldiers and the stories were used to tell the exploits and the reminders that those soldiers' lives were about. So, today what we're going to do is we're going to design our own Greek amphora vase, which doesn't mean that we're going to design the patterns or the story that's going to go on it, but the actual shape of the vase itself. And I'm going to show you a few techniques that will help you design it. One of the things that you should notice about these vases is that each side, if we were to draw a straight line down the center, Ooh, that's not straight at all. But each side is the same. That means that these vases are symmetrical. And what symmetrical means is that if we take the vase and we fold it in half, each side will be the same. They match, as you can see. So, for us to create our own Greek amphora vase, we only really need to draw one side. So what we can do is draw the side and the shape that we want by folding our piece of paper in half like this. And then we're going to draw the features that we want. The neck, the body, the foot, the mouth, the handle, and then if we trace that again on the back, because we'll be able to see it, we can fold it over and trace it here. You can see that the lines are showing through. With your first step is taking a blank eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper and folding it in half neatly. So make sure that you match up the corners like this and make sure it's nice and neat. 
and then fold that smooth. We now have a folded in half sheet of paper. You're gonna wanna use a pencil to do this. So that way you have more control. I'm gonna use a marker so that you guys can see what I'm doing on the screen. You're also going to have a practice handout that you're receiving that looks like this. This gives you the different terms that you need to draw so that you know what I'm referring to. So let's start. So I'm gonna make sure that I'm drawing towards the half that is not folded. So I want the folded creased side to be on my left because I'm right-handed. And I'm gonna start with the lip. And I might wanna get a ruler if I were you. Oh, I want my amphora vase to be about the entire size of our paper, okay? So I'm gonna make a nice horizontal line here and I'm gonna make another parallel line underneath it. And this is gonna be the mouth of my vase. Now I'm gonna draw a nice long neck. All right, there it is. Now you may want to add a shoulder to it. Oh, I'm gonna make a half teardrop shape to make a nice fat body here. And it's gonna come back in to make a nice narrow foot. Remember, you want a good amount of space between the edge of your paper, the folded side here, and where your thing comes. You don't want this line to come all the way over here because if that's the case, when we open it up, we won't have any distance between the two sides and we definitely want some distance. Now I'm going to draw the foot. And you can see how I didn't leave that much space from the bottom of my page to the bottom of my foot. You want to not have too much space. The last thing that I'm gonna draw is the handle, okay? So I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna make one teardrop shape that kind of looks like the shape that I'd made the body, like that, right? And now I'm gonna draw a kind of a dot or C shape that connects there. See how I made this C shape and it connects there? Now I'm gonna do another C shape that matches here, okay? And now I wanna make sure when I draw my other line that it's parallel to this. So that means that it won't ever hit it, right? I'm trying to stay the same distance away from this line, like a dotted line. So I'm gonna gently, really lightly draw this line in to make sure that I know exactly where that line's going. I'm gonna put dots all the way down here, right? Now I'm gonna come back in and draw a nice, strong, confident line because I know the distance. And that's my handle. I got a little bit close here, but that's okay. You're gonna make four or five attempts at designing a good amphora before you choose on your final amphora. So now we have one side of it drawn. We'll be really able to see the back side of it once we've done this, is look at the front and I'm gonna fold it over. So now I see the back and I'm gonna trace the back of it here. That way, I have a nice dark line. And if you're using pencil at this point, you're gonna to wanna to start using marker. So you'll cover the front with marker, trace it really nicely with nice confident lines. In dark marker on both sides of the paper, just like this. So there we go. Now I'm going to fold it back the other way because we want our front side to be two front sides. So we had to trace it on the back so that we would be able to see it through the front to trace it here. Now you can see that we can see it through the paper really easily. And we're going to recreate that on this side. So I'm going to really carefully with nice confident lines.
there it is. You ready? Okay. You can see that a couple of these lines don't quite match up. I'm just going to make sure that they match up and maybe clean up this line. There we go. Try to make very different ones. Try to see how thin you can get the neck. Try to see how wide you can make the body. See how thin you can make the neck and how wide you can make the body. Maybe your foot's a little bit narrower. Maybe it ends sooner here. Maybe you try a different shape of handle, right? You just want to make sure that you have handles, a thinner neck than the body, a wider body than the foot. 